The following lesson is linked to learning outcome one, listening and speaking. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to demonstrate a critical awareness of language use in oral situations. The learners should be able to use styles and registers to suit purpose, audience and contexts some of the time. Learners should also be able to recognize and explain language varieties with a growing understanding and appreciation. Hi, I'm Megan. In this series of lessons on vocabulary, we've realized that the more words you know, the more powerful a communicator you'll be. In today's lesson on appropriate vocabulary, we'll see that certain words are more appropriate in certain situations than others. Would you go to a funeral and say something like this? So, your granny dropped dead. I hope that you were all horrified that I'd even suggest saying something like this at a funeral. But what's actually wrong with this sentence? The words are spelled correctly, it's grammatically correct, and it's the truth. But it's not appropriate for the situation. I'm sure you can think of a better choice of words. How about this? I'm sorry to hear that your grandmother passed away. Ah, that's much better. So that's the focus of today's lesson, using the right words at the right times. By the end of today's lesson, you will be able to distinguish between colloquial language, slang and standard English, and you will know when certain vocabulary is appropriate. Let's start with the type of language you use most often. In fact, if you were to record everything from the time you learned how to speak until now, you would find that this type of language makes up 90% of what you would have spoken. This is known as colloquial language. Let's define it. Colloquial language is ordinary, everyday, informal speech. It changes according to time and place. Here are some words that have been used to describe a girlfriend in informal situations. Girlfriend, chick, cherry, lady friend, babe and Sheila. Which of these terms was used in the past but is not really used now? You've got it, lady friend. And which of these terms is not commonly used in South Africa? That's right, someone would be referred to as a Sheila in Australia. I find the terms chick and cherry quite offensive, yet they're common in some South African communities. Some communities would say these words are examples of colloquial language, whereas other people would consider them to be slang. So what's the difference between colloquial language and slang? Let's define slang. Slang is very informal language used by a particular group of people at a particular time. So slang is even more informal than colloquial language. And whilst colloquial language will be quite widely understood in a community, slang is more specialised and will only be understood by smaller groups. An example of a South African type of slang is totsital. Totsital is a type of slang spoken by young people in South African townships. Here's a short conversation in totsital. Can you work out what it means? I'm not even going to try pronounce this, but in colloquial English, it means the guy with deep pockets must pay for the drinks. Because totsital is a form of slang, only people who are part of the group are likely to understand it. If you know how to speak totsital, you probably speak it to friends of the same age as you living in your neighborhood, but it's unlikely that you'd use it at school. Why is this? 
it's because it's silly to use a language that not everyone in the room understands because then you won't be communicating with everyone. Also, it can be seen as being quite rude. So we've learnt that slang is used with people of the same age as you in your group, but colloquial language is informal language that's used more generally. A general rule is that you use colloquial language when speaking to your parents and you use slang when speaking to your friends. So because most people in our communities would understand colloquial language, we use it all the time. Some exceptions would be at very formal occasions such as a school prize giving or when speaking to important people like a school principal. In most cases, colloquial writing would be seen as too informal for written documents, but there are some exceptions. Colloquial language is used for friendly letters, email, dialogues, and direct speech and creative writing. If you can use colloquial language in these forms of writing, would it be appropriate to use slang too? In formal situations, such as the English classroom, it's best to avoid slang altogether. One exception might be including a bit of slang in the direct speech part of a creative essay. This would help to illustrate what sort of person you're portraying. Just make sure that your teacher will understand what you've included. If you're trying to work out if something has been written in colloquial language or the standard form, look out for these distinguishing traits of colloquial language. Colloquial language has its own vocabulary. Here are some examples of colloquial words that you probably use all the time when chatting to friends, but wouldn't use in formal situations or written documents. Guys for males, cash for money, and I'm for I am. It's quite fascinating that language is evolving all the time, so words that are considered slang today will probably be quite acceptable in formal situations in 10 years time. To illustrate what I mean, have a look at these words that were considered to be slang in the 18th century. Board, coax, gamble, banter, and mob. Although these words were considered to be slang long ago, they're quite acceptable now and are even used in formal writing. If you have a copy of an old dictionary, it's quite fun to see what words used to be considered part of colloquial language. Here's another characteristic of colloquial language. It has its own norms of pronunciation. You may find that you pronounce some words one way in the English classroom and another way when chatting with friends or family. You'll probably find that you use the standard pronunciation in class or formal situations, but the more colloquial pronunciation in less formal settings. Colloquial speech has its own grammatical rules. When we write formal documents, we pay close attention to using correct grammar. But when we're chatting with friends or family, we don't pay quite as much attention. Have a look at this conversation to see what I mean. I didn't do nothing. Know what I mean? What would the correct grammatical versions of these sentences be? In standard English, you would say, I didn't do anything and do you know what I mean? The colloquial form is still perfectly understandable and in fact, if you spoke using perfect grammar all of the time, your friends would probably think you were a little strange. Still, when you're writing something for a formal situation or in the English class, you should aim to use good grammar. So far, we've spoken about slang and colloquial language, which are both used in informal situations. But what do you use in formal situations? 
you use standard English. Standard English is the version of English that is spoken and understood internationally. If you were to pick up an English language newspaper anywhere in the world, you would be able to read it without any problems. You may find that an American paper would spell a few words differently, and perhaps you might see some unfamiliar words in an Australian or Indian paper. But for the most part, you'd be able to understand them perfectly because the language, grammar and vocabulary would all be the same because all would be writing in standard English. If your variety of English is quite different from standard English, you may resent having to learn it, but it's still important. Being able to speak and write using standard English will help you to get a job, especially if the job requires communicating with the public. Standard English will also help you to communicate internationally. You will be able to speak to and understand speakers of English from around the world. And finally, the third advantage of knowing Standard English is that it will help you to read with understanding. Newspapers, textbooks and publications are almost always published in Standard English. As important as it is to know Standard English, it's also so much fun to learn words and phrases that are part of other people's languages and cultures. In South Africa, we have such a wealth of languages that it would be a pity not to learn some of these fantastic words. Here are a few of my favorite examples. Fundi means expert. Skinda means gossip. Fakrump means conservative. Indaba means conference. And a midi means a corn on the cob. How many more examples can you think of? Why not get together with some friends and compile your own South African English dictionary? I challenge you to come up with more than a hundred entries. It's now time for our task. In today's lesson, we've learned about slang, colloquial English and standard English. Put this into action by translating this into standard English. I'm going to use my Boncella to buy a sharp car. My chori gives me too much grief. It's fun to sometimes use some slang or colloquial language. It's also fun to learn new words, but be sure to use them appropriately. Goodbye.